world is music. Today's guest is a legendary manager of studios in LA. She's a veteran of this industry with 30 years of experience in recording studio management and is the manager of East West Studios. She has worked with so many famous artists such as the Rolling Stones, Lady Gaga, and John Legend. Please welcome Candace Stewart. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Happy to be here. Great. Please have a seat. So first of all, could you tell us the history of East West Studios? Well, it's been a studio since the late 50s. Uh -huh. uh, Bill Putnam, who is the designer and the engineer here, he came out from Chicago because Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra wanted him to come to L.A. Oh, wow. They're like, L.A. is the place. Right. So, he came out in the late 50s, early 60s, and he actually opened a studio down the street at 6050 Sunset. It was uh -huh. called United. Okay. And this was called Western at 6000 Sunset. And he opened Studio 2 and 3 first, and then he opened Studio 1. Wow. Yeah, it's been there. We've been a working studio since then. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then, could you tell us about yourself also, and then how you're involved with the studio management and operation? Well, I've been a studio manager for over 35 years now. I started at a studio called uh, Take One, uh -huh. which is now called Glenwood Place in Burbank. I have three older brothers, and two of them are recording engineers still. They're uh, all in, in, in LA? No, no, one of them, well, they were. Uh, they started at the record plant on 3rd Street back in the early 70s. Uh -huh. uh, we're from South Carolina. They came out, had dreams of being rock stars, and ended up working in a studio. But they all work with some amazing clients, and I would come out to visit in high school mm -hmm. and like meet Stevie Wonder and all wow. these amazing Big names. stuff. And I uh -huh. thought, oh, this is cool. But I was going to be a marriage counselor. I mean, I was going to college for psychology. Right. But I came out finally in '85, and my brother Steve, I have three brothers, Rick, Steve, and David. Uh -huh. uh, Rick's in Hawaii, still playing music, still engineering. Steve is in Seattle, still engineering. He's a studio designer. And then my brother David's a photographer. He lives here. Oh, wow. But uh, I started working for Steve in uh -huh. 1985, and uh, I was learning how to be an assistant engineer initially, which I did for about a year. And then I thought that I, I was, had kind of a strong ego. <laughs> <laughs> I thought if I couldn't be the absolute best engineer in the whole wide world, that I didn't want to be an engineer, so I asked him if I could help him. I didn't, I probably should have stuck with it, but anyway. I decided to become a booker and help him with sales and help him with booking the studio. Uh -huh. So what I do is I do all the sales, I do all the scheduling, all the hiring and firing of the staff. I run the business. Right. And that's what I've done at every place I've ever been. Huh. So were there any influences that you got from your parents or because it sounds like you're, you know, all siblings are interested in like art yeah, or, you, you know, know, the music and... I had really artistic parents. My right. mom is, was an artist, she uh -huh. was a painter. Uh, my father was an electrical engineer. He designed the safety systems for nuclear weapons on nuclear submarines. So in other words, he's the one who designed the safety system so you didn't blow each other up. But Sounds a little complicated. Yeah, he was smart. <laughs> he was a very smart guy. But uh, I don't, I'm the only one in my family that didn't, didn't play an instrument. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I just, I love music and I, when I decided to eventually pursue this path, I thought, well, how can I help musicians mm -hmm. and how can I help facilitate people make music? So it was the easy way to do it. I see. So what are the unique features of East West Studios that other studios don't have? Well, the designs of Bill Putnam, he's uh -huh. passed, but uh, his sons, people might be familiar with, uh, they have universal audio, so they've taken all of his analog designs and made digital plugins from those. So they're very successful, very famous. He's gone now. But I think really the fact that um, the acoustic spaces are instruments on their own, mm -hmm. and this is true of all the great studios, Abbey Road, Capitol, all the great studios. The room itself is such an enhancement to the recording. Okay. Then you have the equipment, and then you have the staff. But I mean, a building's just a building without the people in it. So I'm very, very blessed. I have a great staff. That's great. Yeah. And could you name some of, this is the exciting part for me to ask particularly, and could you name some of the, the, the famous artists you've worked with, and then any like a, <laughs> exciting stories? Yeah, you know, I don't the stories. It's a dangerous, <laughs> dangerous ground, the stories. Uh, Let's see. Uh, well, I mean, I've, I've had the pleasure of working with the Stones, you know, right. uh, Rod Stewart, Tom Petty, a lot of records with Tom Petty, uh, the Chili Peppers, who I love. Wow. Uh, the Goo Goo Dolls, I love. The mm -hmm. Foo Fighters, Muse. I tend to like rock. I mean, I'm of that era where I sort of, that's how, I'm 62, so I kind of <laughs> like classic rock. But uh, I think uh, there's a fun story. There's a Mick Jagger story. Uh, hopefully Mick won't hear this and get mad at me. 
But there's a fun story. Um, he was working on the soundtrack for Alfie mm -hmm. with Dave Stewart, mm -hmm. you know, from the Eurythmics. And they'd been working for a couple weeks and they were in Studio 3 mm -hmm. on the west side of the building and they were moving into this side to, to mix. Right. And that particular day, Motley Crue happened to be here and Audio Slave was also here. And earlier that day, Nikki Six said to me, I really want to meet Chris Cornell. Could you introduce me to Chris Cornell? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll introduce you to Chris Cornell. So I took him down there, introduced them, didn't think anything about it, uh -huh. left them alone. And then later in the day, they started jamming in Studio One together. Wow. And they were playing Stone songs. Huh. Right? Just messing around. Right. So Mick walks in and walks into my office, which used to be right over here. And he goes, hey, what's going on in there? <laughs> and I go, oh, this will be great. So I, I buzz into the control room and I said, hey, are you guys recording? And they said, no, we're just, uh, we're just messing around. We're just rehearsing. We're just having fun. Mm -hmm. So I walked into the back room while Chris Cornell was singing, Nikki Six and everyone in Motley Crue is playing, uh -huh. Bob Rock's in the control room, uh, Chris is facing the glass, his back is to us so he can't see us. But I walk in with Mick Jagger and Mick Jagger starts clapping and everybody freaks out and Chris keeps singing and then he turns around <laughs> and Mick goes, good vocal, and walks wow. out the room. So yeah, that was a good That's day. That's cool. That was a good day. Oh my. That's Unusual day. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was happy. Right. Everybody was, was there, too. Yeah, and then, you know, they're doing what they love to do, so. Right. That's right. And any difficult part or fun part of managing studios, uh, particularly? I think in any, sur you know, basically a studio is like a hotel with uh -huh. technology. Okay. So that's how you kind of have to think about it. People uh -huh. book time, they come in, you make them feel welcome, mm -hmm. you get them what they need, and then you leave them alone. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so the difficult part is mean people. <laughs> I mean, people people that are already in a bad mood or people that are unhappy or can't be pleased right. no matter what you do. But uh -huh. that doesn't happen very often, to be honest. I have to be honest. I'm, everybody's really pretty nice. Mm -hmm. uh, the fun part is, you know, I get to hear music long before other people do. Right, I get true. To hear and, and I love... Um, Studio One is very big and we uh -huh. do a lot of scoring in that room. So I get to hear like orchestral sessions out of that room. And it's a thrill to stand in the hallway. I don't interfere on the sessions, but to stand in the hallway mm -hmm. and listen to mm -hmm. like a 60 piece orchestra, it's pretty awesome. So it's like yeah. a, you got a VIP ticket or something. Yeah. Before it's the concert, yeah, you like know, the, the yeah. backstage tour. Yeah, yeah, it's like the backstage <laughs> pass. Yeah, no, it's awesome actually. That's great. And then anything that the studio are currently uh, making a lot of efforts into? You know, we're looking at a lot of new things. I think you've probably all heard about Atmos, uh -huh. I think. And, uh, Surround sound mixing and multi-dimensional mixing is coming more into play as people get more into VR and things like that. Uh, Sony 360 is now in the game. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like uh, VHS and beta. Like we're gonna see who's gonna win. So I'm, what we're looking at right now is waiting to see what, who has the most need. Mm. You know, Amazon's going one way, right. Netflix is going another. True. So for us, I'd like to build another room Actually, upstairs, right up there, you can't see it, but uh, I'd like to build an Atmos room or a Sony 360 room, yeah, so that we can do the virtual mixing, mm -hmm. multi-channel. They call it objects now, it's not even channels, but it's virtual, you know? Right. Is that, so far, it's been like a challenging, or it's pretty much the, it's a combination of a little bit of everything? Just wait. I think uh, that particular thing, as far as what we're looking to do for future, I think it'll just be a matter of when they decide on the format that's the most popular, kind of like Dolby, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. But uh, then the challenge will simply be uh, to buy the equipment, really. I mean, now we've already got the space and already, I think, got clients inquiring about it. So I have to, as I run the business, I have to see how much need there is for something mm -hmm. before I make a recommendation to the owner to buy, buy stuff. So, you know, I would say, look, look, we're really getting a lot of requests for this. Right. So, yeah, I'm hoping that'll be something that we get into. Yay. Yeah. Exciting. No, that'll be awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, you, since, being, you, since you've been so successful and worked with a lot of people, what do you think is necessary to succeed internationally? You know, I think it's the same anywhere you go. I mean, know the market that you're working with. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of international clients. Uh, we have a lot of clients from all over the world that come here. 
I think that anybody's listening to this and wants to get into doing what I do, I would say definitely learn about engineering, learn about recording, because what's really the, the heroes of my world and the people that make my world are the engineers and producers. Mm. You know, they're the people who decide where a client goes, more so than the artist or the label. Uh, they know the rooms, they know the gear they're looking for, they know the sound they're looking for. Right. So they're really the ones that, that you want to please and learn about. So if you want to get into this line of work, I think you need to learn how records are made. Right. You know? So it's kind of right. It's kind of similar question to the previous question, but particularly to y the younger generation. Yeah. Any advices to them? Uh, you know, just get educated. Really, I mean, when I started, there were no recording schools, and now there's so many great ones. I mean, there's the Conservatory of Recording Arts and Sciences in Tempe, Arizona, which is amazing, amazing curriculum. I'm honored to be on their advisory board. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the Blackbird Academy in Nashville. Uh, John McBride, who owns Blackbird Studios. Uh, Martina McBride's his wife. An incredible facility, an incredible program. Uh, but all the major universities, UCLA, uh, USC, they all offer recording programs in conjunction with their music programs. So if you want to find out about the music business, there's so many ways you can go. You can go into publishing, which is kind of where the money is. <laughs> or you can or you can learn about recording, or you can learn about film composition. Uh -huh. You know, that's UCLA and USC both have incredible film composition programs. So I would say go to school. Right, go to school. You know, and then <laughs> get an internship or a uh -huh. job at some place like this. Right. That's actually the threshold. I kind think of, so. Like I mean, it as a go-to. Yeah, I think it's a goal, you know, right. if, depending upon what you want to do. Uh -huh. I mean, I always say that going to school is like when you're a doctor uh -huh. and you're interning, you know, you're walking around, you're doing the rounds, you're looking at the patients, but then when you actually become a doctor uh -huh. and you're in the operating room. <laughs> so I always tell students that internships and is continuing education. Mm -hmm. So you go to school and then you get an internship uh -huh. and you get an entry-level job and that's where you really learn. Right. Because that's where it's really happening. Exactly. School is different. So. Great. So one last question. The title of the show is Create World, right? Yes. So what does the word create mean to you? Well, you know, I mean, it means so many things to so many people. But uh -huh. to me, mm -hmm. the word creative is? means freedom of expression. Okay. Meaning? Whatever that, whatever that expression might be. Mm -hmm. If you're a painter, if you're a musician, whatever it is that you're creating or that drives your creative engine, you know, get out there and express your creativity. You know, there's no failure in keeping trying. Right. You know what I mean? That's how people learn. So I think that that's what I believe it is. I believe it's freedom of expression. That's I don't think art can be stopped, in my opinion. That's great. <laughs> I think it's a very positive message. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Art is what gives all of us joy, especially during this time that we've gone through. Exactly. You know, music, yeah. art. Film, yay, movies are movies back. Movies are back, that's yes, right. Yay, yes. actors, yay. James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Today's guest was Candace Stewart, the legendary studio manager of East West Studios. Thank you very much, Candace. Thank it was you such so a pleasure. Much for having me. Thank you very much. Next, we have some interesting material to show you all. By the way, this episode will be available on YouTube this coming Saturday. For details, please check out our Facebook page. Stay tuned. Wait, wait, there's part two. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.